All cars have very weak radiators. Leaks, swelling, and loss of cells are typical problems for them even with relatively low mileage. Experienced car owners sometimes manage to change a couple of radiators during their operation. There are also a lot of problems with the wiring of the motors. The wiring connectors are poorly sealed, and in places of the greatest heating, the wiring cracks even on engines of recent years of production, and during any work you need to be extremely careful not to cause a short circuit. In fact, the only engine on the Murano is the 3.5 liter VQ 35DE with 231-265 horsepower, which is often touted as almost the best engine of our time. Of the undoubted advantages, it is necessary to note the excellent weight and size indicators and power, only 140 kilograms for a motor with a capacity of 230 to 280 forces is an excellent indicator. The resource of the piston group on many cars with it exceeds 300,000 kilometers. There are also examples of runs under a million. It is very rare to find a car with a 2.5 liter QR25 DE engine and 170 forces. This is an inline four, and it is better known for Nissan cars and light crossovers. She is rarely praised because she has many shortcomings. But against the background of the YD25 DDT diesel engine of 2.5 liters and 190 forces, which in theory was found on European cars, the gasoline 2.5 is very good, the diesel engine has very problematic liners, and it showed itself poorly on Navara and other Pathfinder. What is good about V6 3.5, I have already written. A compact aluminum block cast iron sleeves, a very well designed timing chain and maximum use of plastic in the construction. In general, a combination of healthy conservatism and current trends in weight loss. The motor is a further development of the engines of the VQ line and an upgrade of the earlier 3.0 VQ 30DE motors, which, in turn, go back to the VE30 in design, and the design is very well developed. The chains are quite reliable, they run about 200,000 kilometers, the Americans managed to reach 350, but we have not seen such record holders. The tensioner is quite reliable, and chain wear is visible, 4 to 5 overhang teeth are a new chain, and about 12 are an urgent replacement. The resource of the piston group is also excellent, see above. There is even one regular repair size, and non-original pistons come in two more. True, you need to sharpen the sleeves carefully, there is very little meat between the cylinders. And fuel consumption is not bad, in late cars with a CVT you can get 11 to 13 liters in the city. Unfortunately, it hasn't been without drawbacks. The first weak point is the catalysts and wiring. Any misfires and mixture formation disorders lead to cracking of the catalysts and blows them partially into the cylinders. In general, Nissan's favorite misfortune, from which thousands of Almera and Titus suffered, is also in Murano. Only the price of overhaul of a large motor is almost three times higher. It is better to cut off the catalysts in advance, and it is even better to change them to normal sports cars on a metal, rather than ceramic, basis, which withstand fluctuations in mixture formation. The second problem is closely related to the first. On the one hand, Regularly occurring oil scraper rings lead to a rapid death of catalysts, and on the other hand, a dusty catalyst instantly finishes the piston group, with scuffing of the sleeve and piston, as well as severe wear of the compression rings. And this is clearly seen in the compression. Additional reasons for oil consumption are overheating of the extreme cylinders. The motor is extremely sensitive to the quality and timing of replacing antifreeze, the cleanliness of the radiators and the pump. With simplified Chinese, the fifth cylinder can heat up on a fully serviceable motor. Any overheating leads to accelerated degradation of the plastic valve covers and spark plug well seals. The covers do not warp so often, but the candle well seal is nominally non-replaceable. In practice, the inner plate of the cover is drilled with a crown and an oil seal from Toyota is installed. They just have a suitable one with a seal. You also need to regularly change the crankcase ventilation valve, VKG. It is made separately here, without a membrane and a fungus, and it fits, all of a sudden, from Hyundai according to reviews. The original from Koreans is cheaper and better than Japanese. A non-working VCG, in addition to oil losses, 
causes a drop in traction, leaks and detonation, so monitoring its condition on this engine is very important. The cardboard gaskets of the channels of the phase regulators flow into the sump, which causes not well consumption, but a pressure drop. It is no longer a problem to cut or buy a ready-made gasket with high quality, but if the last time they got into the motor was 10 years ago, then surprises are possible in the form of gaskets made of tin and packing cardboard and silicone sealant. A popular mistake is buying factory gaskets 13533JK21A. They are not suitable for this motor, although they are similar in configuration. Driving with oil leaks is fraught, especially if a low viscosity one is used, 5W30, for example. Here it can not only lift the camshafts, but also the liners, and sometimes the shafts just break and the chains jump. Unfortunately, the motor does not show a drop in oil pressure until the last moment there are no hydraulic lifters, the valves need to be adjusted every 50,000 so that they do not crumble, and there is nothing to clatter. And the sensor, traditionally for Japanese cars, is chosen so that the malfunction lamp lights up when the fist of friendship has already knocked. By the way, replacing the oil pressure sensor with a one-bar sensor is a very successful tuning for the motor. Less serious problems usually come around with increased fuel consumption and loss of traction. The motor is very sensitive to the state of the Lambda, since there is a firmware for negative 2 euro that disables two extra ones, which reduces the number of failures. The intake manifold control system is implemented quite amusingly here. The drive is vacuum, but it is mainly the wiring and relay that fails it. I will note not the most successful thermostat, it rarely sticks, but there is a tendency for a wedge in the closed position, which is fraught with overheating. Air leaks at the intake are not always obvious, the motor is tightly packed in the engine compartment, it is difficult, but desirable, to check many elements. Used motors are quite expensive, from 50 to 100,000 depending on the condition, which is not so cheap. The recommendations are simple, do not overheat, watch for leaks, and it is also advisable to pour oil with a viscosity of not 5W30, but more viscous 10W40 or even 10W60. European and Asian cars have twin piston floating caliper calipers at the front. They get very dirty when driving on the ground and sour easily if the dirt remains between the cylinders. The American Murano has a single piston caliper, a little more dirt resistant, but the brakes are less sensitive and the caliper fingers turn sour more often. The 320mm diameter of the front discs is enough for a car that does not pretend to be sporty, given the weight and power. Rear calipers are always single piston. The parking brake mechanism is implemented by drum shoes inside the rotor of the disc mechanism and the drive is made pedal. The ABS unit is quite reliable and most of the failures are related to wheel sensors and wiring to the unit. The suspension does not bring much trouble. True, the design does not please with the absence of factory repair ball and silent blocks for the front arm of the front suspension and an equally non-reparable upper arm in the rear. But the design goes for a long time, it is simple in the bulkhead, plus there are a bunch of non-factory options for replacing and repairing levers. In the front suspension, it is silent blocks that are the first to be surrendered and more often not because of mechanical wear, but because of oil leaks from the engine. The strut support also does not serve very reliably, crackling at runs under 100 was a typical problem, but now the part has probably been replaced and the replacement interval has greatly decreased. In the rear suspension, the silence of the longitudinal links and the outer floating silent blocks, in fact, the rear ball bearings of the trunnion are the first to wear out. Depending on the average load, repairs are needed at runs of 80 to 200,000, but often you can get by with little blood, changing only the longitudinal link and one or two trunnion ball bearings. In addition to the wear of the suspension itself, it is necessary to take into account the aging of the silent blocks of the subframes, as well as their corrosion, especially the rear one. For runs over 200, the latter is especially true. A regular power steering with a regular rack does not cause much trouble. Unless system leaks happen quite often, the main reason is the pressure sensor in the line. The sensor costs the same as on Logan, and leaks just as often, after a run of 50,000, the chances are steadily increasing. 
The problem is inexpensive, but if you miss the liquid level, then the pump dies quickly, literally in a dozen, just a dozen, not thousands, kilometers. At the same time, the rail is quite strong. With runs over 300,000 it often costs native, with minimal backlash and without knocking. The main thing is to prevent the destruction of the anthers, the side bushings begin to knock almost immediately. In addition to the CVT itself, the Murano transmission has no special problems. Resource Cardan, reliable CV joints, with a resource of 250 to 300,000. The quality of the anthers, however, is not very high, they are not suitable for moving over rough terrain. There is a belief that only a CVT was installed on Murano. In fact, this is not the case. The usual 4-speed automatic is found with a 2.5 engine on Japanese and other Asian cars, and sometimes even comes across paired with a 3.5 liter for cars from the same Asian markets. In Europe, there was also a diesel version, which was equipped with as many as a 6-speed automatic. But in practice, it is almost impossible to meet something other than the CVT JATCO JF010E, aka RE0F09A according to the Nissan code. Cars with engines other than 3.5 are extremely rare, as is the 3.5 variant with 4-speed automatic transmission. You have to literally hunt for the latter, and it's not at all a fact that a single specimen found will be in good condition. The RE4F04B gearbox is a very strong for speed automatic, similar in design to the gearboxes of the 90s. The main vulnerable points are a pair of linear solenoids, a rear planetary gear set, and a torque converter, GDT, where the locking is heavily loaded, although the box does not have sliding modes when the lining is not fully pressed. With overheating, lack of lubrication, and regular peak loads, the clutches of a pair of packages, high clutch and forward clutch, also suffer. With minimal care, the gearbox, even with a 3.5 engine, lasts a long time, lasting many hundreds of thousands of kilometers. The main question that most owners of Murano 3, 5 should be concerned with is how to put a 4 mortar on their car instead of a CVT. Unfortunately, if you want to leave it with all-wheel drive, you will have to look for an all-wheel drive automatic transmission for 3.0 or 3.5 engines with Murano for the Asian market or related Presage 3.0 first and second generations with wiring changes. Well, those who are ready for difficulties weld the automatic transmission from the body of the all-wheel drive variator and the automatic transmission bell of 2.5 slash 3.5 engines. It is clear that such difficulties do not come from a good life. Yes, the JATCO JF010E variator was, in fact, not a very successful experiment since no one made variators with a torque of 300 plus Nm with a push belt either before or after. With a chain instead of a belt, JATCO, Audi, and Subaru had designs, but the belt for such a design turned out to be rather weak and all the constructive measures to preserve it were not effective enough and caused the manifestation of other weak points of the structure. Even under near ideal conditions, the resource of this box rarely exceeds 200,000 kilometers and most often problems appeared after hundreds of thousands of runs. The main breakdowns of the variator are the wear of the gearbox oil pump pressure reducing valve, the wear of the belt and cones, as well as the wear of the torque converter and its blocking linings. Shaft bearings and inner cone bearings still suffer when running on a slip belt or regular full load. A stepper motor needs to be replaced about once every 120 to 200,000 mileage, depending on operating conditions. Most often, for an inexperienced owner, the variator is sent for repair with oil pump problems. Often, at the same time, the belt and cones are still in a completely alive state, and only the gas turbine engine is worn out blocking pads are very actively used here, and when the pressure decreases, they burn out instantly. A guaranteed low mileage variator costs even more, as of the summer of 2021, under 200000 for a Japanese box with a guaranteed mileage of up to 50000 since such parts are in terrible short supply. By the way, the chances that it will work for a long time are far from 100% low mileage does not always mean excellent condition. In general, the preservation of the CVT is the main concern of every owner. Regular replacement of branded NS2 oil every 60,000 or even more often. 
The enlarged cooling radiator, the original one on all cars, is very compact. On American ones it is larger, but still too small. An external filter is also very necessary for this box. To control this automatic transmission, our compatriot wrote a very successful CVTZ50 program, which allows you to check the state of the variator quite fully and even change a number of parameters in its paid version, which allows you to extend the life of the box. Regular diagnostics and careful maintenance are the key to a long box life. It is not mechanical wear that leads to the most costly troubles, but a drop in oil pressure on a serviceable box, the belt, with careful handling, can last a long time and the cones can be restored. The drop in oil pressure is mainly caused by its contamination with wear products of the gas turbine engine linings and belt, as well as wear of the oil pump and valve in it. Since the variator software allows you to control the operating pressure, with proper maintenance the chances of an unexpected breakdown are small. And if you don't bring the box to global failures, then everything is not so bad. The sad truth is that a Japanese car is traditionally bought to drive and not think about anything. As a last resort, buy half a car at a disassembly facility for three kopecks and exchange it for the same amount. Diagnostics and preventive repairs are too difficult. The car end shaft, angular gear and rear axle drive clutch do not cause any particular complaints. The card end does not have an ultra high resource, but its 150 to 200,000 serves quite reliably, and the outboard bearing is the first to surrender. The clutch wears out mainly from people who, for some reason, take Murano off road. Here, it would seem that it is the same as on the duster, but in fact, they are only compatible in terms of filling, the body is different, the rear axle too. For off road, it does not fit from the word absolutely. For most cars priced below average, you won't have to look for paintwork defects for long. Small chips on the doors and hood are almost always present. Corrosion on the rear arches also occurs regularly, and it is often useless to paint them, you need to cut them first. Even if the corrosion of the arches is not visible from the outside, it is worth opening the rear door and removing the lower seal of the opening. There the chances of visible rust are almost 100%. The doors also corrode along the lower part and the arch, and the rear doors from the showdown are now in short supply. With minor damage, it is easier to fix your own than to look for a used one in good condition. The front arches are less likely to rust, but their corrosion also wears away a little. Here the trouble is mainly in the lower part of the wing, at the threshold and at the place where the mudguard is attached. If you knock gently, then dents will surely appear the mud pocket is formed from the inside, so that the metal literally decays over time. The front edge of the hood and lid is also at risk, any chips quickly grow to visible sizes. And, of course, on the back door, near the license plate niche, especially along the edges, near the lights, rust is common. The reason is mainly in the thin paintwork, and it does not hold very well, flying around from chips galvanized it is there but does not save for a long time if the chipped area is clean and does not accumulate moisture then it will help if there is already dirt then do not even count there are small pockets of corrosion near the moldings and door handles and the corners of the doors near the mirrors at the places where the mud guards are attached along the line where the fenders and bumpers meet at the front and rear on the roof along the lining covering the panel seam all of this is also present but less often and not so systematic the most problematic area on the outside is the rear arch it's all corroded from the threshold to the rear bumper the main problem is hidden under the edge of the door, the failure of the opening seal results in the destruction of the seam. Why Nissan used a double-sided seal for internal openings is unclear. But moisture always flows from the arch into the gap in the seal and then does not dry out for a long time. As a result, the edge of the arch in this place rusts first. Further, the seam of the inner and outer arch corrodes on its own, expanding the damage zone down and up. In the upper part of the arch, chipped edges also have an effect, and at the junction with the bumper there is a traditional sandblasting area and a mud pocket. This is where the metal rusts almost in the first place. Almost always, the neglected condition of the rear arches also means problems with the threshold, which is not surprising. Dirt and moisture from the inner arch begin to get into it. 
In this case, destruction of the amplifier and corrosion of the external threshold is only a matter of time. But it itself successfully corrodes if the attachment points of the molding are badly neglected and dirt has accumulated under it. Corrosion on the shelf under the molding must be eliminated in a timely manner, avoiding perforation and regularly washing the narrow opening between them, which is prone to the accumulation of dirt. And yes, if your Murano arches are still in order, or at least there are no signs of corrosion of the inner seam and rotting of the inner arch, then replace the aperture seal with a glued one, and cover the joint with a layer of good primer and mastic. Another serious problem of the body, in addition to the rear arches, is the corrosion of the front glasses of the suspension. This problem is faced by almost all owners who got a car that was not treated against corrosion, with stripping and coating, for example, with cannon fat of glasses from the inside, even in recent years of production. The front seam of the suspension cup and engine compartment mudguard is rusting at a fantastic rate. The first problems appeared at the age of five, when the seam began to ooze red, sometimes such damage was repaired under warranty. The source of all the troubles is in the design of the front arch locker. It collects dirt, and the relatively weak seam and its poor sealing greatly contribute to the manifestation of problems. Typically, serious corrosion is concentrated in a fairly narrow area 5 to 7 centimeters high, just below the seam of the top of the cup. But in case of poor quality repairs or ignoring the problem, both the side part of the glass and its joint with the upper spar may be damaged. This will no longer require installing a relatively small patch, but drilling and rewelding the entire cup with a splash guard, fortunately, they are relatively inexpensive and are still available from Japanese cuts. There is almost no excess corrosion behind the fuel filler pipes in the rear arch. But the difficulty is that the seam between the inner panel and the outer arch is extremely unsuccessful here, and its corrosion affects a bunch of internal body joints. The inner arch joins the rear vertical door pillar with a three-layer pie, leaning on it. At the rear, the inner vertical body panel joins with the inner arch along the trunk niche with a long sealed seam with spot welding, and at the front, the inner arch is open into the cabin opening. In advanced cases, the arch panel rusts to a depth of 4 to 6 centimeters from the joint, which leads to depressurization of the trunk and moisture ingress into the closed body cavity above the arch, corrosion of the body side panel in the rear at the joint. Initially, this panel is also the outer upper part of the threshold, but during repairs it is simply cut off so as not to disassemble the entire car at all in order to replace the problematic element. The threshold is digested separately, and in most cases it is completely dispensed with by stripping the horizontal shelf under the molding. In any case, the work of overcooking the inside of the arch is not easy, requiring the presence of a donor arch and an outer wing. In most cases, it is better to buy a quarter of Japanese cut. There are also problems with the floors of the body. Moreover, they are found mainly in cars with a sunroof, and these are the majority in the population. The problem is poor drainage, which means wet floors in many cars. A wet floor on Murano is a big problem, as the bottom rots a lot, especially in the rear. If the carpets are damp, then holes in the rear passenger footwell are the rule rather than the exception. Well, a lot of corrosion along all the seams of the amplifiers, because they are not sealed from the inside and are not treated against corrosion. Regular paper noise insulation not only works inefficiently along the main profile, but also accumulates moisture, contributing to the development of corrosion. In general, I highly recommend lifting carpets when buying, and when viewed on a lift, do not hesitate to press on the layer of mastic from below, paying special attention to the area along the threshold in the trunk, at the feet of the rear passengers, and at the plugs to the front feet. In general, there are many problems with corrosion. And in addition to all of the above, it is also worth remembering the rear subframe, which is rotting at the seams. Against the background of iron, everything looks more or less good. Of the serious disadvantages, only heavily rubbed headlights and very often damaged windshield. Of the unpleasant little things, the gears in the driver's window are grinded, the rear lights are cracking, after restyling, LEDs fail in American cars due to corrosion of the board. Of course, the chrome coating is peeling off, so the radiator grill painted in matte black is gradually becoming a typical style element. The standard rear view camera is leaky and does not work well. 
but there are standard side mirrors with cameras, and this is a really good option. However, the camera in the mirror floods very often, and it can only send images to the standard head unit with a color display. Well, door stops that break during the warranty period need not be mentioned. These are trifles. The interior of the Murano claims to be premium. 20 years ago, he even looked fashionable, but now trying to look fashionable and sporty already looks funny. Moreover, the materials feel similar to those of Akash K, inexpensive and loud. But there are salons in the version with light skin or fabric, and for Japanese cars, even with Velayer. The seats are exemplary wide and even have a comfortable profile. And there's plenty of space here, a real minivan. The quality of workmanship is a solid C grade, even with a plus. The wear of the steering wheel and seats is clearly visible at runs of 120 plus in the form of a sagging and holy sidewall of the seat and a worn steering wheel texture. In bright salons, the steering wheel is expected to give up earlier. Fabric seats are a rarity, and the leather comes across very different. In most cars, the sides are made of leatherette, and under a heavy driver they sag, rubbing against the plastic part. The central part of the pillow is quite wear-resistant, cleaning, ironing, minimal skin care, and now, with runs of 300+, plus, it is as alive, except that it shines. Silver inserts framed by the dashboard, on the steering wheel and on the center console and around the automatic transmission lever as a whole hold 200,000 or more, but they are often covered with a carbon-like film or brushed aluminum that is more pleasant in texture. On the steering wheel around the buttons, the silver is usually dirty and not wiped off. The multimedia system control buttons and the joystick often peel off, even if the interior is dark. Handles climate suffer only in silver version. The climate system itself is quite strong. Occasionally there is a clogged radiator, a howl of a fan, and the air conditioning pipes corrode over time in the engine compartment, especially the lower pipe under the condenser, but overall the system works well. The electrics could do honor to the Japanese car if it were not for the extremely short-lived generator. By the way, manufactured by Mitsubishi, the flying steering cable and problems with the wiring to the lambdas and the one on the motor itself. The generator usually starts to overvoltage up to 16 volts or make noise due to collapsed bearings. With runs of more than 200,000, this phenomenon is already massive. Of course, the runs are twisted, so the real numbers may be higher, but nonetheless. The steering cable simply broke at about 100,000 mileage, and after that everything depended on the chosen repair strategy. The wiring on the motor suffers for two reasons. On the motor itself, in the front harness, the insulation crumbles on the wires. As a result, failures occur in the injectors, the VIAS system, and others. The connectors of all four lambdas are very badly damaged by corrosion, and the motor is pretty dependent on their condition. Any failures lead to an increase in fuel consumption from 15 to 18 liters to 30 or more, 